This video is to demonstrate the iGlass Isilon Sync IQ for 3 size DFS mode failover. This diagram shows the configuration for this demo. There are 3 sites, site A, site B and site C. Site A is the primary site, site B and C, both are the secondary sites. And we can also see here, there are 3 clusters, cluster 07, cluster 08, and cluster 06. Cluster 07 is on the primary site A, cluster 08 is on the secondary site B, and cluster 06 is on the secondary site C. Sync IQ replications have been configured to replicate from A to B and also from A to C. SMB client is mounting the share from the FS target folder that refer to the sites A cluster 07 share. The FS target folder has been configured to have three referrals from site A, site B and site C. In this initial diagram we can see that the active path is set to the site A, cluster 07. With the iGlass DFS mode enabled, the same shares on the cluster 08 and cluster 06 are renamed with IGLS-DFS prefix. Now let's take a look at this table. This table shows the initial configuration for SMB shares name and DFS path for cluster 07, 08, and 06. As shown here, that the share name for cluster 07 is set to use this actual share name. But for cluster 08 and cluster 06, once we have configured DFS mode and enabled this DFS mode in iGlass, the share name on cluster 08 and 06 are renamed to this IGLS-DFS prefix. We can also see here that DFS path resolved to the cluster 07 and this cluster 07 is the active path. Next diagram shows the DFS mode failover from A to B. We can see here that during this failover from A to B, the SMB share name on cluster 07 is changed. Rename to this IGLS DFS name. And the SMB shares name on cluster 08 is renamed to the actual shares name. With this SMB shares name changes, it will make the FS path to the cluster 08 becomes the active path for the client to access after this failover. One thing to note that prior to execute this failover from A to B, we need to do this P1 preparation step. This is to delete any existing sync IQ mirror policies from C to A on the same target path as the one that we are failing over from A to B. Without this step, if there is existing mirror policies from C to A, then the failover process from A to B will fail as there will be overlaps in the same mirror target path. Next diagram shows the DFS mod failback from B to A. We can see here that during this failback from B to A, the SMB shares name on cluster 08 is changed to the IGLS DFS prefix and the SMB shares name on cluster 07 is changed back to the actual shares name. With this SMB shares name changes, it will make DFS path to the cluster 07 becomes the active path for the client 
to access after this failback. Next is the diagram for DFS mode failover from A to C. We can see here that during this failover from A to C, the SMB shares name on cluster 07 is changed to IGLS DFS prefix. And the SMB shares name on cluster 06 is changed to the actual shares name. With this SMB shares name changes, it will make the DFS path to the cluster 06 becomes the active path for the client to access after this failover. One thing to note that right prior to execute this failover from A to C, we need to do this P1 preparation step. This is to delete any existing sync accumulator policies from B to A on the same target path as the one that we are failing over from A to C. Without this step, if there is existing mirror policies from B to A, then the failover process from A to C will fail, as there will be overlaps in the same mirror target path. Next diagram shows the DFS mode failback from C to A. We can see here that during this failback from C to A, the SMB shares name on cluster 06 is changed to IGLS DFS prefix and the SMB shares on cluster 07 is changed back to the actual shares name. With this SMB shares name changes, it will make DFS path to the cluster 07 becomes the active path for the client to access after this filming. Now, let's see the demo. Let's take a look at the eyeglass jobs panel. From this job definition panel, we can see that we have enabled DFS mode. And under this configuration replication, there are two sync IQ policies. AB policy is the sync IQ policy between site A and site B. AC policy is the sync IQ policy between site A and site C. At this moment, we want to run demo for failover from A to B first. As mentioned earlier that before we initiate failover from A to B, we need to ensure that there is no existing mirror policies from C to A that has the same mirror target path. From this job panel, we can see that there is no mirror policies from C to A. Of course, we can also verify this from Isilon UI. Now, let's take a look at the DR dashboard. Under DFS readiness dashboard, we can see there are two policies with DR status green OK. This tells us that at this stage, we have two options to fail over from A to B or for fail over from A to C. Later, we can also see these two options when we run DR Assistant Failover Wizard. Also, the best practice is to ensure that there is no live access to data during failover or failback processes. When we want to initiate failover, iGlass will also provide a warning when it detects open files. If open files found, we need to decide whether to failover or wait for these open files to be closed. It is recommended to always disable SMB and NFS protocols on the source cluster prior to failover, which is a cluster-wide operation to eliminate data loss. For this demo, let's see what is the behavior when we decide to failover while there is an open files updated during failover. So let's open a file. Okay. So we open file from the SMB share and this is the MS Word file and we will leave and we will leave this file open during this failover. Okay, let's update this data first.
okay, and save it and leave it open. One of the DFS mode failover enhancements since iGlass released 1.5.2 is the renaming share step has been moved ahead of the policy failover step for allow rights and resync prep and after data sync has completed. This will ensure that DFS clients directed to the failover source cluster will be minimized once the failover has started and that the DFS clients will already be directed to the target cluster when the file system becomes writable. During failover, clients with open files will now receive a read-only error message. If they attempt to save data, once redirection has occurred, but before the target is writable. This is expected and give the user feedback that writes will not be successful. Each application has different behavior in how it returns a read-only file system error to the user. Now let's run the system failover wizard. So we select cluster 07 as the source. This is a site A. As mentioned before, we can see there are two options. To failover from A to B or from A to C. For this time around, select the failover from A to B. Now we can see this warning related to open files. We can check the list of open files here. From this list, we know that this uh, DFS test 2.docx is the Microsoft Word file that currently open and updated, and we will leave it open during this failover demo. Okay. And we also, as we want to see the behavior for this failover with open files, so we decide to proceed with the, this failover while this, there is an open files. Okay, so click next and confirm to run DFS failover. While failover process is in the progress, we want to try to continuously update and save this open file. Okay, let's try. Okay, we can see here there is an error. Okay, from this error, actually, it tells us that this file is actually read only. This is expected error, as at this time the iGlass DFS mode failover process has renamed the SMB shares on source and target, but still have not made the target writable. Once the entire failover has completed, we can see that this open file is recovered and writable. So 
so we cancel because we don't want to save a new file so let's see the status mm -hmm. of this failover okay almost done okay you can see that the failover from A to B has completed and now let's see whether now this file the open file has resumed and we can yes we can save it without error okay and now we also want to verify from this SMB client using DFS util to verify the DFS path Okay, so we use this uh, DFS util. You can see that now the DFS path resolved to cluster 08. Cluster 08 is the cluster on the site B. Okay. We also can verify this uh, cache referral. And this is the list of referrals. And we can see that the active referral is the cluster 08. Cluster 07, 06. Both are non-active. Okay, now let's take a look the job the eyeglass jobs panel. Okay, we close this one. Okay, now we can see from this job panel that there is a mirror policy between A and B. Okay, and we need to this we need to enable this because this, the state of this one is still user disabled. So we enable this. Okay, and we can wait until the next cycle of configuration replication run and complete. Or if we don't want to wait, we can also run it now. So we can run this job now. Okay, you can see that job has completed and we also can run the readiness, failover readiness job. So we can see that this readiness task done. So it's already updated here. So now let's take a look at the DR test mode. Okay, under DR dashboard for DFS readiness. Okay, let's take a look at this. We can see that okay, the first one with DR status disabled. Okay, this is the AB policy because we have failed over from A to B. So on the other hand, the mirror policy for A B means the mirror policy from B to A for failback is okay, green. But take note, there is another policy here, AC policy. AC policy has not failed over and at this stage is also available. You can see that the DR start status is green OK. So that's why when we want to do failback from B to A after this failover from A to B, we need to be very careful when we select the source of this failback. Because if we select wrong source cluster, okay, for example, we select A, cluster A as the source. So at the end, we will, it will not direct us to do failback from 
B2A, but it will direct us to fail over from A to C. This is the one that we don't want to do at this stage because we want to do fail back from B to A after we do fail over from A to B. So with this, when we run this uh, DR assistant, we need to be very careful. We need to, to really understand that at this moment we want to do fail back from B to A. So the source cluster should be the cluster 0 8. Okay, next, and it gives us the option only to fail back from B to A. So the AC failover is, is not listed here because we have already selected the cluster 08 as the source. Okay, from this validation, state that the failover configuration is valid so we can proceed and confirm we want to do this TFS failover all right from this jobs detail we can see that the failback process from B to A has completed so now we want to verify from this SMB client using the FSUtil. Okay. So from this we know that this DFS path resolved to the cluster 07 site A. And the status of referrals, the cluster 07 is back to active. Cluster 08, 06 are non-active. Okay, so now if let's say we want to <coughs> continue to fail over from A to C, we need to go to these jobs panel and from this job panel we know that there is assisting mirror policy from B to A. So before we do failover from A to C, we need to make sure that we delete this mirror policy. Okay. But before this uh, failover from A to C, let's take a look also again the our Microsoft Word file. Okay to update okay so we have successfully uh, fell back from B to A so we so now <coughs> we want to fail over from A to C but we don't, we don't want to leave this file open, so we just save it and close it. So prior to do this failover from A to C, we need to delete the mirror policy from B to A. So this is the cluster 08 on the site B. So we want to delete this mirror policy from B to A. Okay. So we can wait until the next cycle of configuration replication updated this job or we can also run it now example we want to update it now so we run this okay it's updated you can see that the mirror policy is no longer inside this uh, list
Okay, let's take a look your dashboard. So under DFS readiness, we can see two options are available: fail over AB or fail over AC. So for the other system, so when we want to do failover from A to C, we select cluster 07 as the source, and it will give us these two options, A, B, or A, C. So for this time round, we select A, C. Okay, validated that the failover configuration is valid. Next. And we proceed with this failover. All right, so the failover from A to C has completed. Again, we want to verify from the SMB client. So DFS path now resolved to the cluster 06, site C. And the status of referrals We can see that cluster 06 is the active path and cluster 07 and 8 are non-active. Let's take a look at the file. Okay. So we update. And also able to save it. Okay. Now let's take a look at the jobs panel. So from this jobs panel, we need to enable this mirror policy. Same thing, we can wait until the next cycle of configuration replication has started and completed. Okay. Or we can also run it manually. Okay. Configuration replication has completed. And we also want to run this failover readiness. Readiness task done. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at the dashboard. Under DFS readiness, see there is a disabled the status for AC because we have filled over from A to C. On the other hand, the mirror policy for AC means the mirror policy from C to A is available and has a DR status OK. And also we need to be care very careful because the AB policy is also available. So when we do fallback from C to A, we need to select cluster 06 from site C as the source. If we select cluster 07 as a source, at the end, it will direct us to do failover from A to B. But at this stage, that is not the one that we want to do. But at this moment, we want to fail back from C to A. 
So we run the R assistant and very careful select cluster 06 as the source. So now it will give us the option only for failback from C to A. So we select this one. Okay, configuration is valid, so we can proceed with this. Confirm, run. Alright, we can see here that the failback job from C to A has completed. So we want to verify again from the from this SMB client. So the DFS path resolve to the cluster 07 site A. And from this referral list, you can see that the cluster 07 is the active path. And let's take a look at the file. Okay, we can see that this file has been updated with this after failover and now we are updating after failback and try to save it yes you can write to these uh, shares okay updated okay and Let's take a look at the jobs panel again. So after this failback from C to A, there is a mirror policy, okay, mirror policy from C to A. So let's say now we want to do another failover from A to B. Again, we need to ensure that we need to delete this existing mirror policy from C to A before we do failover from, from A to be. Hope this demo helped us to understand about this uh, three sites failover using the eyeglass for Isolon with this uh, DFS mode failover. For further information, please refer to the eyeglass online documentation. Thank you.